Hello everyone this is part 19 of what if Naruto was adopted by Kakashi, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Hanata woke up that day, happy as usual lately ever since she and Naruto started to date a few days ago things had been better for her. Why wouldn't it after all, she had been dreaming of dating Naruto since she started to have these strong feelings for him. She loved hanging out with him normally when they had been friends, but now that they were a couple it was only better. She blushed at how he would hold her hand as they walked, or they would link their arms as well. Then of course there were the kisses, this made her blush even more. They usually kissed in private, so he could pull down his mask and she was still a little embarrassed as well in public. At least she could still kiss him on the cheek in public, at any rate things were going well for her. Her pet rabbit was doing much better as well, he looked much healthier now and so she managed to take him outside. This was where she was now watching as Haku-kun was nibbling on some grass. She heard some steps coming towards her and turned to see her father coming. She was a little worried since she had no idea what he might want. I see you're taking good care of your pet, he said to her looking at the rabbit. Hanata nodded her head, why yes. He needed some food and care and he's doing much better. Hyashi nodded his head, it's good that you have shown the ability to take responsibility. There was a moment of silence and mainly it was because Hyashi was meaning to talk to his oldest daughter about something. Lately he had heard the rumors concerning his daughter, and he wanted to make sure how much was true. Although he wasn't looking forward to this, he knew it would happen sooner or later. He just wished his late wife was still alive, this was more of a mother-daughter talk but it needed to be done. Hanata, I've heard a few things lately, mainly from others in the compound saying that they've seen you with the Naruto. He began and noticed her nervous look. Normally this isn't a major deal as you two have been friends since childhood but I believed that the things that had been witnessed were more than just forms of friendship. Hanata knew that her father would find out sooner or later, if there was something to get around quickly in this village it would be scandal, rumor or gossip. Plus she and Naruto hadn't been very secretive. Hanata, Hyashi said to her since she had gone quiet. Why yes, ah, uh, well it's just that, and Naruto-kun and me are, dating. Hyashi sighed knowing that his worst fear had come about. His eldest daughter had finally started to date. He had hoped that he would have a bit more time before that happened. He also knew the issues that the clan elders would raise. It was hard just for those in the branch family to seek someone outside of the clan, because in the end all children would have the seal placed on them to ensure their bloodline would stay in the clan. Another issue was that the main branch family usually had some type of arrangement with another member of the main branch. It was a painstaking process because you had to ensure that first, the two weren't too closely related for obvious reasons. Another was that Hanata was the heir of the clan so her suitor would have to be someone important. For a main branch member to date outside the clan as far as he knew, was unheard of. But he and his wife had seen this coming. Hanata had been taken with Naruto for years even before her feelings had obviously grew with time. Hanata, I must ask you this. How serious are your feelings for the Hitaki boy? Hanata was caught off guard by this question at first. I, I, care about him, a lot father. Hyashi knew it was more than that, his daughter had been infatuated with the boy for a while after all. But there were a few concerns that he had to deal with before the clan elders heard of this. Daughter, you know how our clan has certain laws and rules. Well how serious are you about dating this boy because it won't be easy. The elders will most likely not take this well, so are you willing to fight for what you care about? Hanata hadn't thought about the elders, sure her father was head of the clan but the elders were also in place as a buffer. They were there to ensure that no one leader had too much power, but the drawback was that they had over time, become too set in their ways. They also held some power with certain members of the clan so it was a delicate power balance. She was actually a bit afraid of elders, she had only seen them a few times when she was younger. But the few times she had met them left their mark on her. Then she thought about Naruto, he was the best thing that had happened in her life or at least one of them. She thought about how their relationship was now and she didn't want to lose it. Life without Naruto by her side seemed empty somehow. She looked up at her father and he was a bit surprised by the look in her eyes. 
they still held that kindness that reminded him of his wife but there was something else growing in them. He stopped himself from smirking at the inner strength that seemed to be growing in her. Yes, I will fight for Naruto-kun. She told him without even a hint of a stutter. Very well then, but you should prepare for a fight with the elders about this Hanata, he told her. Also when there is time I would like for you to bring Naruto over for dinner one night. I would also like to talk to him, in a more, official, dinner that is. Hanata's sudden courage ran out at that moment, she wasn't sure how Naruto would react to that. Sure he had been over before but this sounded more official than the times he came over when they were younger. A formal dinner, Hanata asked and he nodded his head. Hanata nodded her head in understanding. She would have to tell Naruto this the first time she got to see him. Now that, that is out of the way I also came here to tell you that your sensei is here to see you. Apparently she had something to ask you and your team. Hyashi said as he turned to leave. He saw the red eyes Jonan and nodded to her as she went to Hanata. He was pleased to see that the woman had done a good job with his daughter so far. One of the reasons he felt that Hanata would better serve becoming a ninja of the village was because so far she had been unsuited for the Hyuga style of training. She just didn't have it in her at that age to take the training so he felt being a ninja, Hanata could be of better service and prove herself more. He mentally sighed though as now he had even bigger issues to deal with than how the elders viewed his daughter. Now he had to deal with boys and for a father that was nothing any father looked forward to. He was a bit envious that his brother had a son, with Neji his brother wouldn't have to worry about this kind of thing. Ramen Bar. Team 7 was once more at Naruto's favorite place for lunch this day. The team took turns on where to go for lunches and today had been Naruto's turn to pick. He had just finished his fifth bowl putting it down, he always enjoyed the ramen here it was the best in the world in his opinion. Then he noticed that Sakura and Sasuke had been looking at him. What? Do I have something on my mask? Naruto asked. I give up, Sakura stated putting her bowl away. I know I've seen your face but I still don't see how you keep managing to eat without taking it off. I gave up on that a while ago, Sasuke said. I'm just wondering how the hell he keeps eating so much. I stick my tongue out at you but I'm more mature than that, Naruto stated to Sasuke. You'd have to take your mask off to do that, and you and mature don't belong in the same sentence. Hey, I am too mature. Naruto shouted at the boy. Sasuke gave him a leveled look, this from the boy that painted the Hokage monument. Ah, uh, Naruto scratched the back of his head. Well I haven't done any pranks for a while. Anyway, why do you think Kakashi Sensei is late today? Sakura asked changing the subject. Plus why has he been a bit too happy lately as well, Naruto? He's been busy lately with his new girlfriend, Naruto said quietly to himself. It wasn't that he didn't mind although the fact that he caught them making out on the couch when he walked in. He really didn't want to see his father getting busy and although Anko was the girlfriend it was hard seeing her in a sexual way. Well mostly hard, given how she dressed but he tried not to think about it, this was the woman that had babysat him, took him to the park when his dad was too busy, was there for his birthdays. She was family to him and although it made him happy it was still a little weird at times for him. What was that? Sakura who was next to him had thought she caught what he had said. What's this about a girlfriend? Naruto groaned, the Hitaki family was a bit of a private family so it was the reason why he didn't go around blurting out things like that normally. His dad is dating that insane purple-haired woman, Sasuke said. Anko-sensei, Sakura asked. She was the only one that called Anko that, given the woman taught her in the use of the tonfis after all. Plus she had seen that the woman was a special jonin for a reason. She was odd but Sakura lately had started to admire the woman a bit. There were few female ninja that a girl could look up to and to Sakura, Anko was one of them. Sasuke, I told you that in confidence. Naruto yelled at his friend. He just sat there and shrugged, not like people wouldn't have found out sooner or later you know. Naruto hated it when Sasuke made a valid point, he wanted to argue it but sooner or later people would notice. So I guess that means both you and your dad are off the market then, isn't it Naruto? Ayami giggled as she gave him his next bowl. She had seen Naruto and Hinata in here yesterday and it was easy to see that the two friends were even more than friends. When her father had asked Naruto about it, the boy had proudly said he was glad to be dating Hinata. What does she mean by that? Sakura asked Naruto with narrowed eyes. Oops, 
Naruto had forgotten to mention it to Sakura that he was dating Hanata. He had just been enjoying himself so much lately that it honestly slipped his mind. Oops. The pink-haired girls mimic dangerously. I was going to tell you, honest. Naruto said holding up his hands in defense. What were you going to tell me? Sakura asked him. He's dating Hanata finally, Sasuke said getting annoyed with all of this. Naruto should have just told her and ended it there. What? When did this start? She demanded from Naruto. Ah. Uh, a few days, the boy said nervously. Sakura glared at him, sure she had given up the chase, but as a friend she still felt like she should have known. Naruto attempted to apologize but she just crossed her arms and ignored him, she would make him work for her forgiveness. Although she was silently happy for Naruto and Hanata, but still he should have at least told her. At least she had some juicy gossip for Ino to share the next she saw her. On come on Sakura-chan, how many times will I have to say sorry? Naruto whined. Do I want to know what you did now? Kakashi asked as he came into the ramen shop. He heard the last of that and from the look of Sakura, Naruto was in trouble for doing something. He forgot to mention that he was dating Hanata, Sasuke replay and ignored the dirty look from Naruto. Well that explains it, Kakashi said as though that was it. Are you really dating Anko sensei? Sakura asked their Jonin sensei. Yep, Kakashi said not saying anything else. He could see the young girl wanted more than that, but that was all she was getting. What he and Anko did, well that was just between the two of them. Although it had been only a few days, things were working out nice. He had never really been in a real relationship before. Then again, neither had Anko, it was new territory for the both of them really. So they were slowly making their way through it all, learning as they went. Well the physical side of things weren't so bad at least, that they had discovered that the other could be very passionate. Hell she brought out a fire in him at times he never knew he had. There was just something about the taste of her lips, it was a mixture of sweet and a hint of iron. Then of course her smooth skin and the way she smelled too. Kakashi sensei. Ha. Huh. Kakashi was pulled from his thoughts at Sakura yelling his name. Dad you've been sitting there for a few minutes now, mind telling us why you asked us to meet up today? Naruto asked. Ah oh, yes, I nearly forgot, he smiled at them as he pulled out several sheets of paper. These are the forms you all need to fill out for the Chunin exams. You're letting us go into the Chunin exams. Naruto exclaimed as he snatched up his forms eagerly. His father had taught him how you advance in rank in the ninja world and the Chunin exams were the first major step. Kakashi nodded, I think you've all proven that you're all capable. But know this, all of you have to agree to this because it is a team effort. If one of you have any doubts at all then you speak up now. Done. Naruto said slamming his completed form onto the table. Kakashi blinked a few times and then sighed, he should have known Naruto would just jump right in. So he picked it up and put it away and looked at the others. Sakura seemed a little nervous but she seemed to be filling her form out, Sasuke didn't hesitate at all as he filled his out. When they were all done he gathered up the forms, a little bit proud that they all seemed to stick together, they would need that for the up and coming trails. Well then, it will be in a few days so rest up. You'll all need it and a piece of advice, look out for each other. Teamwork is what will get you all through this and never forget that. Sure thing dad, Naruto grinned up at him. Well then, I suggest you all go and get prepared, Kakashi stood up and left his team to talk amongst themselves. He could already hear the excited talking among them and he hoped they all would pass. There was another reason for wanting them to take the exam, sure he felt their teamwork was good enough, plus their skills were above normal genin. But he felt that great things were expected of his team, when he first made his pitch for why he wanted the top three students, he had to live up to it. Sure the wave mission was a good step but now, they really had to prove that Team 7 could be everything he had claimed it could be. A bit of him was worried, mainly the part of him that was a father. Fatherhood had changed him a bit, he didn't deny it, but now he found himself worrying a bit more over the kids. He sighed as he made his way to the Hockage Tower, he just hoped things would be okay. People died in these exams but he had to have faith in them. Back at the ramen bar something hit Sakura, hey wait a minute. Who won? Naruto watched as Sasuke gave her a sheet of paper as she looked through it. Naruto couldn't believe that Sakura was in on it too. He really didn't like that people had been making bets behind his back and so he quickly snatched it away. Hey, 
Sakura shouted out. Naruto scanned the list and he couldn't believe it, everyone from class was on it. Even Konohamaru and Hanabi were on this and Ayami and her father. He casts both of the ramen stand workers a small glare, they both suddenly found some work to do and turned their backs to the boy. There was Asuma, even Kurenai on it. Even Anko and his own father was on this list, the biggest shock was the Hokage himself. What the hell? Did the entire village know about this? Naruto demanded. Calm down, Sasuke told him. It's not that big a deal. Yeah, Sakura said. We were just hoping you two would get together anyway. So, who won? Naruto looked at the dates, Shikamaru apparently, hey wait. Sakura-chan, you had a date a few years from now. So did Ino and Anko, what the hell? Well, with how you were totally oblivious and her too shy. Sakura trailed off. She also had made the bet back when she thought she might want to try a date with him as well. Now she and Sasuke had to listen to Naruto rant on about how he thought his friends had no faith in him. It would be a very long lunch hour. Later. It was later in the day and the team had gone their separate ways, Sasuke said he needed to get some new equipment for the exams, and Sakura went to find Ino. Already Naruto could hear Ino yelling at him for keeping such big news secret. He sighed to himself, it wasn't like he wanted to keep it secret, he had honestly just forgot to tell them. At any rate, he was already on his way to meet up with Hanata, hence the smile on his face. Despite what happened at lunch, he was now in a much better mood. After all he was on his way to see his girlfriend. He couldn't help but notice how cute she was recently, he loved the way she blushed as it made her even cuter, plus her skin was always so soft. He kicked himself for not noticing her before now, all that time wasted. Well he was going to make up for it. He had been planning on some major dates to make up for it. He had been looking for any festivals in nearby villages that he could take her to, plus a real fancy restaurant. There was that small movie theater but the new Princess Gale movie wouldn't be here for a few months. He really wanted to take her to that movie, as he loved those movies and he knew Hanata liked them too. At any rate he was hoping she didn't have any training today, or would be on missions. But when he got to the tree in the park they always used to play under when they were younger, he stopped to just look at her. She really was cute and the kindest person he could remember. Just looking at her you could see it, almost like she radiated purity. After a moment he walked over to her and when she saw him, he could see her smile. It wasn't the usual kind he noticed, but lately she got this smile that she only showed to him. He liked that smile the most. And Naruto-kun, how was today? She asked as he sat down with her. Pretty good, although Sakura-chan was made I forgot to tell her that I was dating you, he chuckled. Naruto-kun, you didn't tell her. Well it's not like you told your team, then he noticed her look. Oh. Dot you did tell them then. Of course, she said. I would never keep this kind of thing from them. Plus Kiba-kun, kept asking why I was so happy and so I told them. They were very happy for me, so why didn't you tell your team? Naruto scratched the back of his head. Well my dad already knew, I told Sasuke but I just forgot. I mean I was enjoying things so much and well, it just slipped my mind. Hey wait a minute did Kiba or Shino exchange money or mutter anything about a bet? Hanata blinked in surprised after they had congratulated her, something had happened. Kiba had asked Shino, who was closest and the bug user took out a small notebook. He cast a look and said something about Shikamaru. Even Kurenai seemed to have sighed at that for some reason. How did you know? Hanata asked confused. I hate our friends sometimes, Naruto muttered. Then he explained the entire bet, Hanata's face went totally red from embarrassment. Hanata couldn't believe it, her friends, her teammates and even her sensei and little sister had been on it. She thought only her little sister had known, but everyone knew and made bets. She felt totally mortified. She groaned and hid her face in her hands she must have looked like a fool for so long. Then she felt an arm around her as Naruto pulled her close. Hey I know, Naruto said softly to her. I'm already planning my revenge, you want to help me. Hanata wasn't sure at first, she knew that pranks could be funny at times. But she never had the nerve to try and pull any. Oh come one, think of it as a couple's night out. Naruto grinned at her. Hanata twiddled with her fingers at first, spending more time with Naruto would be fun. Plus she didn't like how all those people had bet on her and Naruto like that. So she eventually nodded her head, Naruto smiled knowing she wouldn't let him down. 
Um, Naruto-kun. Hanata remembered something else she had to tell him. There is something that we'll have to do, but it will have to wait for a month or so. Oh. Hanata nodded, my team just entered the Chunin exam so. Wait. Team 8 joined up too. That's great. Naruto shouted. My team will be there also, this is going to be great. And Naruto-kun, she said trying to get his attention. Ops. Sorry. You were saying. My father found out we were dating today, she looked down at her hands. She didn't see Naruto pale suddenly. Although he was good friends with the Hyuga clan, the little run-in with Neji had him nervous enough as it was. Now he had to deal with her father as well. He liked her dad, don't get him wrong, but the guy could be a little intimidating at times. He knew that her father would find out eventually, just not so soon. The sudden image of dodging the gentle fist style from her father came into his mind. And my father wants you to come to a formal dinner when we get the time, Hanata said and then heard a thump. She quickly turned to see a slumped over Naruto, Naruto-kun. She shook him, trying to get him up but he was out like a light. It would take her a couple of minutes to wake up and when he did, his good mood was suddenly changed to a sense of impending doom for the near future. This was the day, the day that Naruto and his friends would enter into the Chunin exams. He had barely gotten any sleep that night as he had been too excited. When he caught up with his teammates he could tell that both of them looked to have a little trouble sleeping as well. But they were all looking forward to this. They made their way to the academy, Naruto wanted to run there but both teammates held him back. Sakura scolded him to keep his excitement down, they needed to focus and there was no telling what they would be up against. As they made their way there, Team 7 noticed other teams going to the building. Looks like a few other teams are here, Naruto muttered looking at the different forehead protectors. I can see a grass nin team and is that a mist headband? Looks like it, Sasuke said seeing the three-man team Naruto pointed out. Naruto felt a bit nervous about that, it was a good thing that Zabuza wasn't here with Haku. He had wanted to know if they could come but his dad had warned him that it was a bad idea the last time Naruto sent a letter to Wave. After all, Zabuza was, officially, listed as dead and if someone recognized the man it wouldn't have been good. Looks like it were finally sent a team this year, Naruto muttered seeing the markings of the village hidden in the rocks. His dad had told him stories of the last great war, there were still hard feelings between the villages, mainly from Awagako since they had lost the war. Normally when Kanoa held the Chunin exams Iwa didn't always send a team. Apparently this year things were different. Hey, out of the way shorty, said a voice that came behind Team 7. Naruto turned to see who called him that, as he was still a bit sensitive about his height. Behind him was an older boy in some kind of black suit with purple face paint and something on his back. With them was a blonde girl and standing a little off to the side was a red-headed boy. There was something off with the last one, he just kept staring into space looking bored. He was kind of creepy looking too. What did you call me? Naruto challenged him. You heard me, the boy said. I think the last person that should insult someone, is a guy who wears makeup on his face. Naruto shouted out at him. What the hell did you say? The older boy said angrily. This is war paint you little shrimp. Call me that again and you'll need more makeup to cover the bruises on your face. That's enough Naruto, Sakura said to him knowing his temper. Are you three sand ninja, our villagers are supposed to be allies so I apologize for his behavior. But he started it, Naruto whined but was silenced by an angry glare by Sakura. Kankuro that's enough out of you as well, the blonde said to him. Oh come on Temari, Kankuro said back. I was just having some fun. Be that as it may, the girl is right. Temari glared at her younger brother. We're here for the Chunin exams and I won't let you get us getting kicked out for fighting with a team when we haven't even gotten into the building. We're wasting time, the red-headed boy suddenly said. We're moving, now. The way the boy spoke was something that Team 7 couldn't miss, he was quiet but there was a threatening undertone to it all. They were also surprised by the killing intent behind the boy as well, that was directed at his own teammates. Oh of course Gara, Temari said quickly as the Suna team moved off. Man I'm so glad we don't have a guy like that on our team, Naruto muttered. Was he giving anyone else the creeps? Yeah, Sakura said. She had just met the boy but there was something just, not right about him. Those cold emotionless eyes and face and his voice was very off-putting. Sasuke just gave a small grunt as he walked on. 
bastard is trying to be cool again, Naruto muttered to himself. With that Team 7 entered the academy it was weird to be back here after spending so much time as Genins. Although they didn't have time to think about old times as when they made it to the second floor they noticed a whole group there. They saw Team Guy arguing with a couple of older kids who seemed to be trying to keep people out. They kept on saying things like how everyone here wouldn't make it, how hard the exam was and things like that. Naruto was a bit confused when he saw Tenten and her team being pushed around. Why the hell doesn't she just kick his ass? Naruto said to his friends. Quiet, Sasuke told him. Can't you see what's going on? At Naruto's blank look he sighed wondering why he let himself become friends with an idiot. They're acting, everyone here is against each other's teams, remember. That means everyone here is looking to see what the other can do. So if they act weak, everyone here will think they're weak. Naruto suddenly got it. He had to admit it was a neat trick. There's something else odd, Sakura said as she noticed something else. We're on the second floor so why does that room number say it's the third? Everyone looked at the small sign above the door, it was then Sasuke cast a quick look behind them and noticed the other doors started with a two. He gave a small grin as he caught on to the genjutsu. He explained it to them and said they should quietly make their way around this. Sakura agreed that it would give them better odds in the exam if they didn't blow the genjutsu. Besides she caught Team Guy sneaking past when another group challenged the two boys. Nice acting job guys, Naruto said as they caught up to Team Guy. Thanks, Tenten said then rubbed her ass. Although I wish I could have landed better. Sakura-chan, Naruto-kun and Sasuke-kun. Lee came up to them with a huge gleaming smile. I was glad to hear that you all joined as well, let us all compete and see whose flames of youth burn brightest. Ha, huh, you said something. Naruto said as though he wasn't listening. Ah, Lee pointed an accusing finger at Naruto. You are using your father's hip and too cool attitude. Great, Neji muttered to himself next to Tenten. Now it's Guy and Kakashi, the next generation. Tenten giggled at the joke covering her mouth as Naruto and Lee acted like Guy and Kakashi. She noticed Sakura and Sasuke walk up leaving the other two to their little interactions. Hey Tenten, Sakura greeted. It's nice to see a familiar face in this. Yeah but remember, we may be friends but in this it's every team for themselves. Tenten said in a friendly tone. Sakura nodded in agreement, oh trust me I've been working on my tonfus and a few other things in case we meet up again. Then I look forward to it. Tenten told her as both girls shook hands. It was then that they noticed that Sasuke and Neji were posing and staring at the other, neither one wanted to show any weakness to the other. This left both girls to sigh at this, it just seemed that they couldn't expect those two to get alone for a few seconds. Hyuga, Sasuke said. Uchiha, Neji returned. With the friendly greeting out of the way Sasuke turned to face the girls. He noticed Tenten and suddenly an evil idea entered his mind, after all he remembered what Naruto did around her to get under Neji's skin so why let it go to waste. Naruto had a girlfriend and couldn't continue the little fun, plus he had to admit Tenten interested him. It's nice to see you again, he said to the weapons girl. Tenten was surprised at this but gave a smile back, yeah nice to see you too. I look forward to seeing you show your skills out there, Sasuke told her and then leaned in a bit close. You know, Naruto isn't the only one that thought you were cute. With that he moved off leaving a very blushing Tenten behind and Sasuke could swear he heard Neji grinding his teeth together, or at least he imagined the other boy was. Team 7 after prying Naruto away from Lee, got to the front doors. No one was there so they entered into and they couldn't believe what they found. The entire room was nearly filled up with genins from all over the place. Great, Naruto muttered. So much for thinning out the crowd downstairs. Oh well just another challenge right? Sakura said trying to be optimistic. Sasuke was about to make a comment when a loud piercing scream made him flinch. He also felt the familiar arms of another annoying blonde in his life as Eno latched onto him. Seriously, couldn't the girl take the hint he wasn't interested in fan girls? He was wondering if he could convince Tenten to pose as his girlfriend of something to get him off his back for once. Eno. Sakura yelled at her. You know that Sasuke-kun hates that. Oh come on I hardly ever get to see my precious Sasuke-kun, Eno whined. You get him all to yourself you know. Naruto snickered at Sasuke's face as he tried to get out of Eno's grasp once again. So where's Choji and Shikamaru? Over here man, 
Choji said as he and his lifelong friend walked up to them. I'm surprised you guys could get Shikamaru to enter into this, Naruto joked. Shikamaru just sighed. Ino threatened to make my life a living hell if she couldn't enter into this. My life is troublesome enough as it is without her on my case all the time about this. I really didn't want to do six months of her complaining until the next one. Figures, Naruto smirked. So where's team eight? Why looking for your girlfriend? Kiba asked him as he came forward with a huge grin on Naruto's blushing face, at least the blush that could be seen just above his mask. At least I got a girlfriend dog breath, Naruto told him. Yeah, and it took you only how long to realize that she likes you. Kiba laughed as Naruto had nothing more to say on that. Kiba kun be nice, Hanata's voice said as she walked out from behind her teammate. Then she turned and smiled brightly at Naruto. Hello Naruto kun. Hey there Hanata chan, Naruto said brightly taking a hand in his and giving her a light peek on the cheek. Making the young girl blush but still smiling at it. Missed you, and good luck today. Why you too Naruto kun? She smiled back at him. Ino sighed at the sight, why can't Sasuke kun be like that with me? Because he doesn't like you. Shikamaru sighed. Ino quickly glared at the shadow user. Shut it. You kids really should learn to keep it down. They looked to see a genin that was a few years older than they were, he had glasses with white hair but he seemed to have a friendly manner about him. You're starting to get on the nerves of the others. Everyone looked behind him to see a room full of glares at their antics. Oops. Naruto chuckled as he scratched the back of his head. We'll keep it down? Ah, uh, sorry I didn't get your name. That's because I didn't say it yet, the boy smiled at them. I'm Kabuto Yakushi. So is this your fist time here? Sakura asked him. Oh no I've done this many times before, it's kind of embarrassing actually. Kabuto said giving a small lord. Oh man how hard is this? Ino moaned, she had hoped to pass but if this guy had been doing it several times, she suddenly didn't have such high hopes anymore. Well if it was easy anyone could make Chunin, Kabuto explained to her. Although this year I think I got the inside track. You see all this time has given me a good insight to all the competition. I've been gathering information on all the people here so I know what they can and can't do. That would be extremely helpful, Shino observed. But wouldn't such information be valuable to others as well? Kabuto smiled as he pulled out what looked like blank cards. I thought of that, that's why I made these. These cards hold all my information but they respond to my chakra only so only I can use them. Watch this. With that he pulled out a card and a slight blue glow showed up around it. Then the information suddenly appeared, there were states, a bio and even a picture. It was a very detailed piece of information actually. Let's see who we got here, ah look at that. Sasuke Uchiha, genin of the year of his graduating class, put on team 7 under Kakashi Hataki. You have 16 D rank missions, one that was turned into a B rank and another that went up to an A rank mission. That's impressive for someone that young. Now then says here you have a few fire jutsus under your belt. Activated you Sharingan and you're above average with swords. Family fighting style of intercepting fist is your primary taijutsu style as you're above genin level in hand to hand. Also says you're the only of two living Uchiha left in the world as well, given that your brother. That's enough, Sasuke snapped at him. The last thing he wanted was to go through that personal history. He also didn't want to go into his brother, he knew what that man did and there was no need to open that door to his past up again. That seemed kind of specific, Kiba remarked. Well I do my research plus as a Kanoa ninja I have better access to those in our village. Kabuto explained to him. But I still have information on the other just in case as well. Really? Sasuke asked then looked at the sand team. What can you tell us about that Tsuna team? Kabuto pulled out the cards and read them off apparently they're all siblings and the children of Tsuna's cage. Kankuro was something called a puppet user. This was a bit lost on the Genins as they had never heard of it. Apparently it was a specialty in Suna that uses giant ninja puppets. Temari was a wind user and top kunoiki of her class with very high marks. Gara was a bit more of a mystery other than he used some kind of sand jutsu but what was really odd was the team's mission profiles. They had many B-ranked missions and Gara had never been injured once while on them. What? That can't be right, Kiba said looking at the card. No one can go on those missions and not get hurt, at least not a genin. Well I assure you that my cards are very accurate, Kabuto stated pushing up his glasses slightly. 
Looks like that team is the one to be careful of, Sakura said casting a slight worried look to the Suna team. Hey don't worry, Naruto said smiling at her. They never met us yet and we'll show them what Kanoa Ninja are made of. Hey I don't recognize their headband, Choji said as he noticed a trio in the room. Which ones? Ino asked looking around. The girl with the long hair, with the boy and the other guy with bandages all over him. Oh I see them, yeah that is weird, Ino said noticing the symbol. What kind of village uses a musical note as a symbol? Ah oh, that would be the sound village, Kabuto explained. You see they're a new village in fact this is their first tune and exam. But not much is known about them, since like I said they're new and in one of the smaller nation. Hey you got a problem with us. One of the sound genin said as the trio moved closer. They had been listening in and they didn't like the way the leaf genin was talking about their village, almost like he was looking down on them just because their village was new. Well they were going to show that just because their village was young it didn't mean it was weak. It was then that a fight broke out, Kabuto got into a fighting stance as the leader of the sound team a boy named Dosu, ran forward and took a swing. It had looked like the bandaged boy had missed but Kabuto's glasses broke and the older boy fell to his knees sick to his stomach. Before anything else could be done, Naruto was there with his sword drawn at Dosu. The other two sound members made to move but both Sakura and Sasuke went to block them as well. The entire room tensed up as Genins from all over started to get ready for a brawl. All the pent-up energy that had been building up in the room was about to explode. Thankfully before the first ever Chunin battle royal in history, the doors flew open as a large powerfully built man with a commanding presence entered. He wore a trench coat and his face was covered in scares. That's enough, he commanded. Everyone get into your assigned seats within three minutes or I'll fail any of you that aren't seated. Oh crap, Naruto muttered as he saw a Biki. Friend of yours, Sasuke asked dryly. One of my dad's poker buddies, Naruto told him as they started to move towards their seats. He's in charge of the torture and interrogation department. He's kind of creepy and likes to play mind games. Is that so Hataki? Came the deep voice as Naruto froze in place. He nervously looked over his shoulder at Ibiki who was standing behind him. I suggest you get to your seat before I fail you, you got that. Naruto quickly nodded and ran off to find his seat. Ibiki grinned, maybe this first exam would be a bit more fun than he thought it would be. Naruto couldn't believe his luck when he sat down in his assigned seat, to find Hanata of all people right next to him. To him that was a good omen as he gave her a little wink, he smiled seeing her blush shyly, he loved it when she looked like that. She just looked so cute and he wondered if there was any way for them to sneak off to a closet. But then Ibiki told him to shut up and the rules of the first part of the exam. Just when things were looking up, Naruto heard what the first part was. It was a damn written test of all things, the bane of his existence in school. Naruto silently screamed in his head, he had never been good with tests. Even his dad had once said that he was great at the practical stuff, but with this kind of thing he just sucked. Never let it be said that Kakashi Hataki never mixed words, he said what he thought without pulling any punches. Naruto looked at the sheet and his eyes glazed over at the questions. Sure he hadn't been that good with his studies and needed help at times but looking at the sheet he was sure they never covered this stuff in school. The first question alone read as, if target A is 15 feet away, traveling at a speed of 5 miles per hour due east. You have a kunai of a weight of 1 pound and you have a throwing arm of 70 miles per hour, wind velocity is coming from the west at 4 knots. At what point from the center of axis between target A and yourself, do you throw your kunai? Naruto just sat there his mind totally blank, he was in big trouble and he knew it. That was just the first question and already he just felt his confidence dwindle to nearly nothing. He was so dead and he knew it. He felt a slight nudge from Hanata who had filled out a few of the answers already, he was surprised to see her Byakugan activated. She was cheating and apparently with how easy it was to look at her paper, she was giving him an easy way to cheat as well. He wasn't sure if he should when he noticed something else, everyone seemed to be cheating. Well, except Sakura, she was the only one that actually didn't need to cheat as she was smart enough to actually know this stuff. With that he suddenly got the idea behind the whole test, he knew that Ibiki liked to play mind games, was that what all this was? Well, look underneath the underneath like dad says, Naruto thought. Outside, across the building waiting on the rooftops was Anko, she had her little surprise there just waiting for her grand entrance.
although she never was one for waiting and she was getting very bored. She leaned forward against the waist-high wall just looking through the windows at the Jennings. She could see a few being thrown out for being too obvious in their cheating. Honestly, if a ninja couldn't learn to cheat well they would be better off as Jennings. Man I wish I brought myself some dango at least, Anko sighed. Ask and you shall receive. Anko quickly turned around as instincts kicked in, she didn't like having people sneak up on her and she lashed out without thinking. Thankfully the person caught her wrist and pulled her up against his body. Now is that any way to greet me? Kakashi asked her amused. You ass, you knew what would happen if you snuck up on me, she wanted to be angry but she couldn't totally be angry with him. Although she did hate the fact that he could sneak up on her, barely anyone could do that as it was. Then she noticed that with his free hand he lifted up a few sticks of her favorite type of dango. Ooh, gimme. She reached out but he pulled his arm back just out of reach. Hey. I think that being the good boyfriend that I am, I should get a reward for this don't you? Kakashi smirked. Anko grinned and with her free hand pulled down his mask to give him a long sensual kiss. She had to admit there were some very good upsides to being in a relationship. She liked the way Kakashi tasted and although you never knew it, he put a lot of passion into these kinds of moments. The man he looks and he could sure damn well kiss. But she wasn't going to be outdone by him, she slipped her tongue through his lips pulled herself up against him even hard. By the time they pulled away both needed some air and both felt like they wanted more of each other as well. There was surprisingly a lot of passion in their relationship, maybe it was all that repressed emotions and never letting it out before. It could also be from that fact that they had never been comfortable enough with another person to open up like this. Whatever the reason their relationship burned like a fire within them. Kakashi smiled as he pulled up his mask, well that's a good reward all right. It better be, Anko smirked as he released her wrist and she took a step back, and took the dango sticks in her other hand to her mouth. Kakashi blinked and looked at the hand that was supposed to have held the snacks and then gave a small laugh. She had used the kiss as a distraction to take them from him cleaver and he would remember that. He looked at the bundle by her and looked at it confused. Do I even want to know what you have planned with that? He pointed at it. She smiled at him, just my way of making a big entrance. Kakashi sighed, always have to make an impression don't you? Anko laughed at that and nodded, oh yeah you know it. I do, Kakashi said as he got closer to her. I think I still have a few, impression, your nails did on my back a few nights ago. Or, want me to kiss them and make them better. Anko teased taking another bite of the snacks. Although to her it was his own damn fault, if he didn't want her to leave marks then he shouldn't get her so worked up in bed. Although she remembered a few marks he left as well and was thankful her clothing covered those areas up. Maybe later, Kakashi said and then looked at the windows, so how are they doing? Not sure, Anko said. I can only see like a third of the damn room but I think your brat is still in the running. Oh I know, Kakashi said happily. He's my son after all and I trust his team to do well. Anko had to admit that Kakashi made a good father at times, he was so confident in Naruto and his team that she kind of wished she had that before Orokimaru. But she learned that you can't change the past just live with it and go on. And she had moved on, she was a special jonin now, had good friends, and was finally in a healthy stable relationship. Yeah, so far life was good and she felt like things were going well. As she finished the last of her snacks she leaned next with Kakashi as they watched the kids. She wasn't the type to be all girly but with no one around she could drop her guard a little. She leaned her head against his shoulder and she wasn't surprised when he gently placed an arm around her. She gave a small sigh of contentment. For some reason just being held by him like this felt nice. After about five minutes though it was getting a bit boring just standing there waiting. God, how much longer is Ibiki going to drag this out? Anko muttered. Getting bored. Hell yeah. Hmm, okay then how about, Kakashi trailed off as his arm went down slowly caressing her back along the spine. He gently started to make small circle patterns in her lower back for a bit. We passed the time in a more pleasurable way. His hand then reached her ass and she suddenly didn't feel so bored at the moment. Tune in test room. Naruto couldn't believe that after everything it had all been a set up. After he got the answers from Hanata and waited for the clock to end the test but before the end that scared bastard pulled a fast one on them. He should have known that Ibiki wasn't through with them yet, so he made up that so-called, tenth, question. 
a question that if they took and failed they were supposed to stay as Genin forever and the other option was to leave but your entire team would go as well. A few took the leaving option but Naruto didn't want to back down, there was no way in hell he was going to quit now. He saw that Hanata looked a little nervous and gently took her hand in his, she gave him a small smile and he felt her grip his hand a bit harder. He gave a quick nod to his teammates and they waited. But it turns out it was just another mind game, the way to answer the question was to just simply stay in the room. Naruto felt relieved and also pissed off at this. Of course he forgot it as soon as Ibiki took off that bandana of his and went on some kind of speech about information. He honestly wasn't really paying attention as he tried not to stare. Ibiki liked to show those off during the really high stakes games to put everyone off the game. He had done it to Naruto a few times and he really hated it when the man did it. After his speech he said the next person to take over the exam would show up. So they waited, and after 20 minutes even Ibiki was checking the clock. She's not normally this late, Ibiki muttered to himself. Finally the window crashed open and a giant poster with the words, Anko Mitarashi, Proctor for Part 2. On it, Naruto groaned, he should have known that he would run into someone else he knew from his father. To have his, crazy aunt, his dad's girlfriend, in charge he was sure she would try and pull some kind of jokes on him. You're late, Ibiki said to her. What, did you do run here? He noticed how her hair was slightly unkempt and how her clothing was a bit ruffled. She also seemed a little flushed as well. Anko nearly sweat dropped as she scratched the back of her head. Ah, uh, well, this thing took more time to set up than I thought so I had to run to get here. Anko said hoping everyone believed the lie. Then she noticed one of the boys was looking at her strangely, she remembered him as one of Naruto's friends. You got something to say? Anko asked. Kiba smirked as he and Akamaru could smell more than just sweat on her. Nothing but was the running before or after you met Naruto's dad. Anko tensed up as she suddenly cursed in her mind, she had forgotten what clan that boy had come from. That damn Inazuka nose of his must have smelled the sex on her as well as Kakashi. Naruto blinked a few times as he thought about what Kiba said and how he was trying not to laugh. Then he looked at Anko and suddenly it all hit him. Ah, I didn't need to know that. He shouted grabbing his head and slamming his face onto the desk. Kiba burst out laughing as Anko made a mental note to torture Kiba later on for this, no one made a fool out of her and got away with it. This is going to be a long exam, Abiki sighed palming his face with his hand. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.